Hello, this is Simon, and this is the second episode of my electricery channel. And, and it's a bit of a sad one, actually, in some respects, because I did some investigation about my investment in PV and batteries at my home in Austin, Texas. Uh, we left Texas well, just over a year ago now, um, and I've gone back and looked at all the data. And, and frankly, it, it, it's not great. But on the grounds that you could either be better or at least be a warning to others, I thought I would share with you some of the findings I've made. Let's talk about what we had first. We had a, about a 5,000 square foot house, which might sound big, but frankly, pretty standard Texas suburb size house, maybe a bit bigger. Our electricity bill was about $500 a month. And honestly, after the smoke snow apocalypse of 2021, where we got four minutes, 37 seconds away from losing the entire power grid, I decided that we needed to do something about it. So I put this PV system on, that's 15 and a half kilowatts, if you want to add it all up. And I also put two batteries in. So that's what it looks like from the air taken from my little DJI. And then this is what the actual array looks like. Pretty much ignore the numbers. However, there are some things to note on this. I actually ended up doing this project in two phases. We did the PV first and put about 12 kilowatts on the roof. Uh, and that worked with one inverter. And then we added two batteries later and that came with its own inverter. We had two batteries. These were LG lithium ion uh, batteries. So I decided not to stick these in the house. They're actually in the garage. These batteries weren't very successful though in the market because they actually went out of production pretty much immediately after I bought them. I talked earlier about how this house had two inverters. There's a, a photograph of all the madness going on outside the house. And as you can see there, I've got two inverters. I think one was five kilowatts. The other one was seven and a half, both solar edge. They seem to work okay. I'm not going to actually complain about the inverters. There's the spec of the LG, as you can see there, lithium ion. Yeah, I don't know that I'd want lithium ion in my house in the modern era. If you ask and you want a copy of my um, spreadsheet, you're welcome to it. So I took an average uh, and as you can see, not surprisingly, we produce more power in the summer than we did in the winter. The gap between the two is not that enormous. Let's talk about a couple of things that matter around PV in Austin, Texas. Uh, we were with Pertinalis, uh, which is the local utility, although we didn't have any option, although it's a quote, a private company, it's not really because you've got no choice, but to use them. We paid 11 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity. You can get a variable rate of electricity, but not if you've got PV. Our friends at Pertinalis don't tell you this until you put the PV system in, which they have to know about for licensing purposes. There's no point in time shifting, which means that really having batteries is a very limited utility. You can sell electricity back to the utility, but as you can see at 1.9 cents a kilowatt, it's just not worth the effort. I think I'd rather mount some sort of massive laser on the top of the house and beam it into space rather than give per analysis electricity at 1.9 cents a kilowatt hour, but that's just me. And as I said before, there's no time of use rates. Honestly, and this is very disappointing five years after I put it all in, I can't say it's economically viable, right? It, the total installation of the PV and the batteries was about $45,000. I saved on average $1,456 a year for the five years I had the system over there, which gives me an ROI of two, over 30 years. And frankly, I'll be very dead in 30 years. So what do I care? But also the regulatory system could easily have changed. Any number of things could radically change in 30 years. I don't think any ROI is worth looking at over that period of time. And of course, that's also longer than the life expectancy of any of the technology. I have to point out that I don't think having PV in Austin, Texas, and probably anywhere in Texas is actually worth the effort. Will I do it all again? I think you probably know the answer is probably not. I did find out that Texas hates uh, photovoltaic. They really are going out of their way 
to make sure that no one who actually looks at the numbers would ever decide to put PV on, which is just mental in a world where Texas is one of the hottest, sunniest places in the country. There's also a small matter that the Texas grid is a total disaster. For those of you who don't know this, the Texas electricity grid is actually separate from the rest of the grid for the United States because Texas, it doesn't make any economic or logical sense at all. It's all politically motivated. I can't imagine that all of those um, politicians aren't getting backhanders from the oil industry. Of course they are. So as a result, the grid is a disaster. In 2021, that winter, there was a, what we call the snowpocalypse and Texas, central Texas got about six inches of snow. Texas is not built for this. And the whole system nearly collapsed. We got within four minutes, 37 seconds of losing the grid completely. Now, if we'd lost the grid completely, it would take somewhere between two and four weeks to bring it all up. Because if you had to do a, what they call a black start, that means you have to kick off the entire grid system from scratch and switch everything off and then bring it back up again. In a winter, a few hundred thousand people would have died, I suspect. In a summer, I honestly think that they could have lost society. You lose electricity in somewhere as hot and humid as Texas in July, and everything collapses. Uh, there'd be no cell services, there'd be no emergency services, there'd be no refrigeration, no air conditioning. It would be a catastrophic experience. And it was one of the reasons we put PV in in the first place, because I worked on the principle that, yeah, okay, it's not going to be very economic, but it's a lot more efficient than the generator, if more expensive, and um, I can actually get more fuel for it. It's, it was really something to consider, but what an awful ex reason as to why to spend 45 grand on a PV system, because the government who are meant to be looking after the people will fall down on their job. And I think that's a real disgrace, but hey, it is what it is. So would I do it again? If I still lived in Texas, yeah, I probably would have done it actually. Is it economic? No, not at all. So with that, I think we're going to move on the next video on to happier climbs, uh, figuratively and literally, and I will talk about what we designed for our home in, uh, Northern Colorado and show you why actually having expensive electricity at certain times and cheaper at others makes an enormous difference as to the economics around the whole solution. So if you're interested in copies of the slides, I'd be happy to, you just send me a note in the comment section and we'll start a conversation.